welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40,000. Uh, it is Changer Scorpion, it's 1850 points, and the Skitari with their Imperial Knight will be making their debut in this game. Not an easy one though, they will be taking on the Eldar and their allies, the Tau Empire. Right, so fighting across this Mechanicum outpost here, it is Skitari controlled uh, planet, but the Eldar are going to make an incursion here, and they brought along Tau allies as well. Right, so welcome to this 1850 points Changer Scorpion game. Uh, debut here for the Skitari and their Imperial Knight as well. Tough uh, match for them here on their debut. Going to take on Tau and Eldar, but we'll see how well we do. Uh, the Skitari in battle, Manipal, prepares itself for war with the Imperial Knight to help them out as well. Just going to run through the list. So uh, it's the Skitari battle, Manipal. Uh, all the Skatari units will be part of that formation, and then just adding an Imperial Knight to the force as well. So uh, a unit of Rangers here, uh, a unit of 10, with an Alpha, uh, Phosphor Blast Pistol, an Arc Maul, and then two Arc Rifles for that unit. Then across here, a unit of Vanguard, uh, two Plasma Calivers there in that unit, and then an Alpha with a Phosphor Blast Pistol and Arc Maul for him also. Uh, then under some close combat units here, uh, Rust Stalker's unit of 8. Uh, there's a Princeps in there with a Data Spike, and they're armed with Cord Claws uh, and Transonic Razors for them as well. They've got Mind Scrambler Grenades also. Then across here, 7 Infiltrators. Uh, there's a Princeps in there. They're armed with Flechette Blasters and Taser Goads. Uh, no other upgrades for them. Uh, just across here, actually, a Relic's been taken here for the Princeps. Uh, that uh, He has taken the Omniscient Mask, so Zealot for that unit across there. Then two uh, Sidonian Dragoons uh, with the Lances there. Just a, a cheap scouting unit there for the Skitari. And then for heavy support, it is uh, three Onagar Dune Crawlers, all armed with Icarus Arrays, and then Cognis Manipulators for them as well, uh, so it will not die. Uh, and then a close combat weapon available for them. And then adding on to the Skatari Battle Maniple is the Imperial Knight. So it is Greven, uh, Ferris Maximus here, the Imperial Knight, that will be joining or allying himself with the Skatari here to help them out in their time of trouble. So that's the theme, Imperial Knight in the middle of the army, and then the Skatari units uh, working uh, with that unit to try and bring about victory here. But we'll see. So that's the list there for the Skatari. We'll check out to see what the Eldar uh, have here with their Tower allies. Alright, so uh, Chris has come down here uh, with his Eldar, and he's just to fill out the army up to 1850 points, he's still working on a number of units. Uh, he has brought some Tau allies down. It'll be a debut for them. You're going to get to see Brian's Tau that he's been working on, and uh, a very nice army uh, indeed as well. We'll let Chris run through what he's got. Okay, it's 1850 points of Eldar, combined arms detachment, and Tau allies. My headquarter is a Spurt Seer. He got for his Warlord trait the mark of the Incomparable Hunter, so he has split fire. He also has in the Psychic Powers, I took them all from the Runes of Battle. So he has the Primus Power of Conceal, he rolled up Protect, and he also has Empower. He'll be joining a Wraith Guard unit, which is just stock. They'll be in a dedicated transport of a Wave Serpent, Twin Link Bright Lance, Hollow Fields, Spurred Stone, and Star Engines. For the troop choices, uh, four have a basic nine-man Dire Avenger unit, basic 11-man Guardian unit, another 11-man Guardian unit, but they have been upgraded to take an Eldar missile launcher, and then have a six-man Ranger squad. For a wee bit of variety and give it a debut for myself, I took a Viper. It's been upgraded to have the Star Cannon. I then have six Striking Scorpions. One of them's upgraded to an Exart with a Biting Blade. And the last of mine is five Dark Reapers with an Exart upgrade. He doesn't have that weapon on him, he doesn't have the Tempest Launcher, he's just the basic rocket. And they've all been upgraded to take the Star Shot missile, so effectively crack missiles. I'll need to go to the cheat sheet here because I'm not familiar with the tie. Brian's been very good to lend me some of his models here, just to beef us out a bit. The headquarter for the Allies is a Cadre Fireblade. The troop option is a Fire Warrior Strike Team. We then have in the Elite section a Ghost Keel unit. They have been bonded and upgraded with a target lock and advanced targeting system. 
They have twin linked flamers and ion rakers. So effectively they can each split fire off the separate target and they have precision shots. Then in the heavy section have a hammerhead gunship. It is a real gun, smart missile system and submunition rounds. And the final option is fast attack. It's a razor shark strike fighter. It is a missile pod, quad ion turret and decoy launchers. All right, so that's the 1850 points list here uh, that Chris has brought along. Brian is here, he wouldn't let the tower out of his sights. So he's come to observe uh, the battle as it takes place. So he's lent out a tower task force here, and he's going to observe uh, and see how well they do before we get to see his full 1850 point army here. But they're allying here, or Eldar are taking tower as allies, and they're going to try and take on this Skatari battle menopal and Imperial Knight. It's very rare you see an Imperial Knight brought down. I haven't seen one brought down yet. Uh, in a regular game of 40k, Chris hasn't seen one either, uh, neither Brian. So, but it may happen today. <laughs> we'll have to see. A little bit nervous, really, uh, this Skatari. We were looking forward to perhaps an easy game to break them in, but no, this is going to be a tough one. We'll go on to scenario and deployment next. Okay, so on to the scenario here. It is the Emperor's Will, so there's one objective each, and deployment is Vanguard Strike. Uh, so we've marked out the centre of the uh, table here with a string of orange dice. And then Chris with the Eldar and Tau will be deploying uh, at this end uh, of the table, and his objective is just tucked in there. And then uh, around the other side is where the Skatari and Imperial Knight will deploy. Uh, just marked by that string of orange dice just there. So this is the view uh, the Skatari will have, and their objective is just here. So just uh, talking about the scenario here, the objectives are quite close together. That one there for the Skatari, and then just across here is the one for the Eldar. Uh, Chris won the roll-off, uh, but he's going to let the Skatari go first. They're going to deploy first here, and go first, unless the Eldar can seize the initiative. All right, so Skatari deployment uh, is here, so uh, deploying together, that's the usual tactic, just to uh, mutually support each other uh, throughout the fight. So Imperial Knight taking centre stage here, uh, lining up to make an advance in this direction, and then uh, Vanguard on his right-hand flank, then just behind the Honor Guard Dune Crawlers. Rangers just here next to the objective, Rustalkers just to their left, and then on the extreme left here is the uh, Dragoons. Uh, then infiltrators, we have infiltrated here uh, with the infiltrators. Uh, they have deployed just the other side of the fence. Now we've still got scout moves to do here uh, if we decide to use that rule here for the battle maniple. We're we'll going to Eldar deployment now. All right, so uh, Chris reacting here to the Skatari deployment. Uh, his allied tower unit fire warriors just behind the crates here. Uh, scorpions have infiltrated just tucked behind this generator out of line of sight. Just cover the other uh, infiltrators as well. He's put the uh, snipers just here, the rangers, just on the extreme left-hand side. Uh, maybe they'll be ignored by the Skatari and that'll be good. The snipers can pick away uh, at the enemy targets during the game. Uh, then across here... Uh, Dire Avengers holding the objective in between the crates. Then just behind them are the Dark Reapers. And they're right at the very back. A nice long extreme range is the Tower Hammerhead. And then the Ghost Kill unit has deployed on the right hand flank. Now we're just talking about objectives here. Uh, Allies of Convenience, is it they're called? So these guys, the Tower, will not be allowed to hold the objective. It will have to be. Uh, an Eldar unit that holds the objective. There's an interesting twist here to this game. Tau uh, just turning up for the fight, uh, but no idea why the Eldar have taken so much interest in this objective. Who knows what's hidden inside these crates here uh, that the Eldar have so much interest in. But Skatari uh, are here to try and cleanse the area of uh, these enemies of the Imperium. We'll have to see. So uh, just to cover reserves here for the Eldar, uh, the Guardians on foot, the two units here, uh, then the Wraith guard uh, with the Farseer inside the Wave Serpent and then uh, the Viper coming on from reserve and then also the Tau Flyer. So heavy amount of reserves here for the Eldar and Tau. Right, just to mention the terrain that we're fighting on here, we're using one of the battle mats from GameMat.eu, uh, Forges of Mars, one of their limited edition battle mats here. Uh, very suitable here for Skitari and Admech armies, so very nice uh, design that they have. And then uh, it's just made from that mouse mat material, it's like a rubber 
material here and then a, a different material on top with the design printed on top so uh, very nice very figure friendly any lead figures resin figures that fall over there's no damage and then for rolling dice as well it's nice and quiet also and then uh, gamemat.eu also produce terrain and we're using the industrial terrain set that they have here as well and again it fits perfectly on uh, this battle mat here but that's the terrain that we're using in this game uh, you can check them out at gamemat.eu so uh, that is deployment done we will go on to scout moves now we'll see what the Skatari do they do have that option to make some scout moves here uh, with units from the Skatari battle maniple all right, so we have taken advantage of the scout special rule here. It's pushing ahead with the rangers, six inches. Rust stalkers, six inches. Pushing out with the dragoons as well. And then the walkers uh, shifting to their left. So we're going to try and take the fight to the Tau and Eldar in this game. Shifting to the right here with the vanguard. Moving across, going to try and uh, eliminate the scouts potentially. And then moving down this corridor here uh, with the infiltrators as well. So that's scout moves done. Uh, now we'll go on to seize the initiative. Last Chris, if he wants to, he's already oh, yeah. got, already has the dice in his hand. So he rolls a, <laughs> rolls a one. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, Skitari will press on then. They've made their scout moves, and now they're going to continue their move here as we go into the first turn of the game. So, so uh, Skitari will go first here, led by uh, their hallowed uh, Imperial Knight here, Greven. Ferris Maximus of House Raven. So we're going to the first turn now for the Skitari.
All right, so on to the first move here. Just getting ready to move here with these Skitari. So debut for them. Haven't used them yet at 1850 points. Uh, so trying to remember uh, the philosophy behind the army. They're trying to fight together, stick together, and try and take on targets as they move forward as one. That's the uh, philosophy that they'll take. We'll see if it pays off here. They're up against a tough combination, Eldar and Tower. Uh, as we get towards the end of 7th edition, saying goodbye to that edition, getting ready to move into 8th edition here, but we've managed to get a game in here for the Skitari. Uh, we thought we'd start, we thought we were going to start with some easier games against the lower level armies, but here they're going to take on uh, Tau and Eldar, but we'll see, they're up for the challenge, uh, the Imperial Knight prepares to make his move, so we'll go on to movement here for the Skitari forces. Alright, so Skitari continuing their move. Uh, the Vanguard here pushing out another six inches, being pushed by forwards by them, uh, going after the Rangers just there. We have gone for plus two ballistic skill this turn and then minus one weapon skill. Just going to try and let out some very accurate firepower this turn. Uh, the Infiltrators, nine inches moved by them uh, with their uh, June Strider special rules. They've moved up right up close to the Fire Warriors and then the Scorpions just behind. Then here the Imperial Knight strides forwards 12 inches, 6 inches moved, shifting to the left here with the Dune Crawlers. And then we were going dead ahead with the Rangers, uh, but just being aware of the deadly firepower of the Ghost Kills just over there. So we've shifted to the left instead with the Rangers and then using cover here uh, for the Rust Stalkers and then also uh, the Dragoons as well. So that is movement done here for the Skitari. Quite bold and, and confident from them. Uh, moving out to try and take on a variety of targets here in the early stages of the game. We'll go on to their shooting phase next on turn one. Alright, so uh, we're going to kick off shooting here with the uh, Vanguard. Phosphor Blast Pistol firing first. If we cause a wound with that, uh, we minus one cover. There's a fair amount of cover here. Uh, crates and then stealth and then we are on night fighting as well. Uh, so Two's to hit here with this one. One, do get a re-roll uh, for Ballistic Skill 6. No, okay, so he's missed. Right, so that's missed, that's a shame, but we'll fire the uh, Radium Carbines now. 21 shots from 7 uh, of the Vanguard. And then re-rolling. That's a one, one. There's plenty of ones there. We'll re-roll these on Ballistic Skill 6. Needing 6s. We do recover a couple of hits just there. So uh, we'll be on force to wound now, and then sixes will cause an additional wound as well. So there's one six, we can add a wound to that, and then fours. Right, Chris will go to ground here. He's got 13 saves to make here as these radioactive rounds come through. So he'll be on two plus. Any ones will be casualties. Three. Three brought down. Okay. Plasma calibers here. Twos. Uh, this one gets hot, but because we're on that ballistic skill six, we get to re-roll it, needing a six to hit, which we do. <laughs> <laughs> Twos to wound strength seven, uh, five more saves. These are AP2, but Chris will use cover here. So two pluses to keep them alive. Saves all of them. Nice there. So uh, failed to wipe the unit out, but we have forced them to go to ground, and there will be a morale check for them to do as well. All right, there's other shooting we've done here. Uh, the Imperial Knight firing forwards. Uh, we fired the Storm Spear rocket pod here over at the uh, Hammerhead. Three shots, but bouncing off the armor there. Strength eight against armor 13. Uh, Chris didn't jink with him. Then uh, he Heavy Stubber and the Avenger Gatling Cannon fired across. Uh, Chris then declared the... What's the rule called again? Holographic countermeasures. Holographic countermeasures. Countermeasures, I should know it, uh, but that's been used. Snap firing coming through. Uh, one drone was required to make a cover save, which Chris passed, so no damage done uh, against the ghost kills. Firing here, seven shots coming through uh, across this way. They're range 30 there with the uh, galvanic rifles there and uh, two fire warriors brought down behind the barricades. That was fire from the rangers coming through. So that's that. We've still got uh, these to fire. Possible run moves to do with the rust stalkers and uh, the Dragoons, and then we're now going to Flechette Blast the Scorpions. They're just behind uh, cover there. I'm going to try and take them out uh, with the Infiltrators. So we'll roll up 35 shots. They'll get five shots each. So uh, it was a difficult choice between which ones to go for. We're going to try and take out the Scorpions. I'm trying to point to them here, but I've got dice in the hands here. So uh, 35 shots. So twos to hit, and then any ones, which there's a couple... 
re-rolling here needing sixes no okay so that would be 33 hits there and then we'll be on shred uh needing fives to wound right so uh fives to wound there's a few and then we'll do some re-rolls all right so uh those are the wounds and then uh re-rolls here as well so there's a fair few we'll figure out how many saves chris needs to make all right so 20 saves here uh chris will use his heavy aspect armor i i think a couple will survive at least <laughs> but you want to keep the exarch alive we'll see here so i'll have to do them in the first three and then i'll start looking at it. sure okay so one. there's one brought down he's just gradually working his way back until he gets to the exarch here so he's saved five so far he's saved seven Oh no, he's, he's, he's fouled one. There's two twos. Trouble here. Scorpion's been brought down. We'll just continue on here. He's doing two at a time. There's four ups for lookouts here. Another good guy. It's okay. The Axard takes a hit. It's okay. Okay, the armor's holding pretty good. Three Scorpion's brought down so far. I've lost track, but Chris knows what he's doing. <laughs> one lookout and one on the Axard. So the Axard save. And the lookout doesn't work. It's on the Axard. Takes a wound. Axarch's wounded. Can you imagine this hail of firepower coming through? No, so one on the Axarch. He's dead. dead. Axarch's down. The remaining scorpions hiss in defiance. There's two of them left. Remaining saves here. Is it going to be a wipeout? It is. It is. Oh, dear. <laughs> They've been brought down here. An ambush. They were waiting to ambush. You can imagine them hiding around the corner here, waiting for this Qatari to come down uh, this corridor, but too fast. And they were caught out, uh, the infiltrators turning to their left, and then blasting away with these flechette blasters here. And in a hail of firepower, the scorpions have been brought down. Quite a blow there to the Eldar. One of their elite units has been destroyed. Okay, so the uh, rest of the shooting phase has been finished, and it's been quite impressive here from the June Crawlers. So snapshots of these, but did get a number of hits coming through, and uh, particularly impressive with the Gatling rocket launchers coming through. Four hits with them on sixes to hit, and uh, ignores cover strength 6A before we took out a number of the drones just there uh, on the ghost kills. So not too bad at all, and a wound taken as well, a fouled armor save as well so pretty impressive from them uh with snapshots needed uh they've done not too bad we were planning to advance but we're going to hold here behind the cover uh just with the uh, scary amount of firepower that the ghost kills can uh bring out and then across here uh, morale test passed but these have gone to ground here with the eldar rangers so skatari turn finished uh, pretty impressive. They have picked up first blood. They've dished out some damage here on turn one, not too bad, and uh, look in a pretty strong position here at the moment. But it's very early stages here in the game. Going to hand over to the Eldar next with their Tau allies. Uh, we'll see how they respond here to this Skitari advance.
right, so movement here for the Eldar and Tau on their turn one. Uh, quite restricted here, still waiting for plenty of reserves uh, to arrive. Uh, but here, Fire Warriors and the Fire Blade here holding the position, just to let out the maximum amount of firepower here against the Infiltrators. Uh, moving out here with the Dire Avengers. I think Chris is planning to use a Battle Focus move with them. Holding position here with the Dark Reapers, they're not moving yet. And then uh, the Ghost Kills shifting across to their left, not advancing too far ahead uh, there yet at this stage. And then the Hammerhead shifting to his right uh, with a shot down in this direction. You may go after the Onagar Dune Crawlers. Then uh, across here, pinned, we'll be able to fire snapshots here, but pinned or uh, gone to ground here with uh, the Rangers. All right, so uh, movement done there uh, for the Elder and Tau. No psychic phase, psych is still off the table here on turn one, so we're going to shooting phase next for the Eldar. Shooting phase here, uh, snapshots coming through, uh, Chris firing pistols, no damage there on the uh, Vanguard. Then across here, uh, volley fire coming through, uh, brought down one of the infiltrators, and then a load of wounds, it was nine saves we had to make, past five of them, and then recovered uh, three more on feel no pain so just one wound caused there that was fire from the die avengers chris then rolled a six for battle focus they've disappeared back in uh to, in between the crates just there but infiltrators have come off lightly this turn not taking much damage no morale tests needed from them uh then uh, the ghost kills they were here they've since done their jetpack move uh back this way and they fired overcharge uh, Iron Rakers firing through, uh, bringing down half of the Rangers in that squad. They've passed morale, but five of their number being brought down. Uh, the Hammerhead did fire, uh, tried to fire uh, submunition here, but the shot scattered wildly and missed, so no damage done from that. That is the end of the turn. Uh, we've done the jetpack moves here for the ghost kills. There's no charges, no assaults. So turn one is finished. Uh, it's been a better turn for the Skitari, you reckon. They've done uh, some more damage here, especially with the loss of the Scorpions. Uh, but the uh, Eldar and Tau have replied here and done some damage in return. But we're going to the second turn now. Things are going to get interesting as reserves begin to turn up for the Eldar. Remember, they still have a lot of reserves to arrive. Uh, but we'll see now what this Skitari Battle Manipul decides to do. It is spread out, uh, units spreading out in different directions. Whether that's wise or not, we'll have to see. We'll go on to their second turn next. All right, so on to the second turn here for the Skitari. They're pressing ahead with their advance. So taking up position behind the barricades here, uh, just anticipating uh, potential reserves turning up for the Eldar next turn. Uh, so behind the barricades, and then they will be able to fire across at the rangers just there. Uh, then advancing six six inches here uh, forwards with the dune crawlers just anchoring at the back. Uh, that's how they're designed to be used. Uh, moving out six inches here with the rangers, just a squad now at half strength. Uh, moving out about eight inches here with the Imperial Knight and then pivoting and just holding position just uh, in the centre here. And then the infiltrators uh, have moved across and they're going to either go after the uh, Dire Avengers or the Dark Reapers. We'll have to see. Uh, nine inches here moved out with the Dragoons. Uh, pushing ahead and then the rust stalkers moving uh, nine inches as well so fair bit of speed here it's quite deceiving a lot of foot infantry based units here for the Skitari you think they're slow but a lot of them here moving at nine inch speed uh, so it's quite deceptive as to how quick their bionic legs can carry them but we'll go on to this second turn of shooting now there's uh, no bonuses this turn just declared uh, just a regular ballistic skill here uh, on the Doctrine Imperatives. So movement done. We're going to shooting phase next for the Skitari on turn two. All right, so uh, shooting phase here for the Skitari. Uh, they have eliminated the Rangers here. They've been destroyed. Uh, didn't fire the Plasma Calibers, saved them. I managed to wipe them out just with the uh, Radium Carbines just there. And then now they're holding position, just awaiting to see what reserves come on and where. Then across here, uh, the Imperial Knight firing down with the Avenger Gatling Cannon and Heavy Stubber has brought down uh, the Fire Warriors here. Uh, Cadre Fireblade is still alive, uh, no damage or wounds on him. Uh, then we fired the Storm Spear Rocket Pod across here at the uh, Hammerhead. Uh, three hits there, one penetrating hit, but a cover save passed on that, and uh, Chris didn't jink with him. Then uh, we ran the Rust Stalkers here, they're just behind uh, the containers just there. Uh, getting ready potentially to charge there with uh, the Dragoons. 
and then we fired snapshots at the ghost kills with the uh, June crawlers, they then firing through, uh, no damage done at all there on the ghost kills there, uh, cover save helping them out. And then uh, the only other remaining, got gone to ground here by the way, and then the only other remaining firepowers here, the flechette blasters firing through, uh, bringing down a number of the Dire Avengers. So uh, shooting phase finished for this guitar, it's not been too bad. Uh, we'll go on to their assault phase next, they do have assault based units that can potentially charge now uh, here. I think we're going to go for a multi-charge, we've discussed it, and uh, it is plausible to do that if they reach in combat. And then here, uh, potential charges as well with the Dragoon. So we've gone to Assaults next for the Skitari on their second turn. Alright, so Assaults here, a bit of a twist. The uh, Dragoons have made it into combat, uh, so Overwatch couldn't take place, couldn't damage them as they go in. Uh, but here we have failed to reach in combat, uh, rolling up a 5 in total. Uh, it's just an inch short of reaching the primary target. We're going to go after those, but just short here. So these are caught out in the open now. They may be, uh, they may have to pay for that later on, we'll see. Uh, but there is a combat that takes place. The Dragoons have made it into combat here against the Dire Avengers. Right, so uh, Chris can't fight here. doesn't have any weapons that can damage uh, the Armour 11 there of the Dragoons. So Hammer of Wrath here, first of all. Strength 5, so double 6 to start off with. It's two saves of 4+. plus. The Dragoons might do well here against the Dire Avengers. One. Yeah, one of them kicked over <laughs> there by the Dragoons. And then 8 attacks on the charge, needing 4s to hit. So not so good. And then twos to wound at strength eight. Two more wounds coming through. So just uh, two more saves here to make. And uh, we'll all passes them. Right, so lost the combat just by one. Uh, so a morale. Idea. Yeah, so leadership eight is passable. A cock dice and a six. Needs a one or a two. Gets a four. Leadership ten. Or roll of a ten. They're away. All right, so uh, Chris has broken row. Just check initiative here. Uh, joust special rule here for these. Uh, they double their initiative characteristics, not just the weapon, but their actual characteristic goes up. So there'll be initiative six. And we've just rolled up uh, for the uh, special rule as well for Crusader, which they get D3 uh, plus on their initiative as well. For sweeping advance, we've rolled a five. So they're at initiative nine versus Chris's initiative five so just roll our result here <laughs> we get a six I will be wrong. see what he would have rolled a three okay so shock troopers here uh these dragoons have piled in and then have chased down these dire avengers el electrocuting them in the back <laughs> it's a nasty sight Trumped to behold to death by robot chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for that uh, very accurate description here of these Dragoons. But uh, a shock here, um, pardon the pun here for these electrical weapons, but a shock result here for these Dragoons. They've taken their used their initiative here, charged in at speed, caught out the Dire Avengers here in another ambush, and then have trampled them down as they've tried to fall back. So shocking stuff here from the Skitari uh, on this second turn. A few surprises. We've surprised uh, here, first of all, with the Infiltrators at their speed and shooting potential. And then now across here, the Dragoons uh, have chipped in here with a nasty surprise sneak attack as well. So uh, that's pretty good from the Skitari. Shame here about the Infiltrators, but that is the end of the turn. Uh, do we do we get to... Uh, these guys get yeah, to do a consolidation? consolidation. They do. Okay, so do that consolidation move. That'll be the end of the turn. Uh, it's going well for Skitari at the moment, but we'll see what reserves turn up here for the Eldar and their Tau allies. So uh, just, just discussing the cinematics of the what's just transpired here. So imagine the uh, Dire Avengers facing this way against the main threat. And then the guy at the back who's meant to keep a lookout, uh, Hammer of Roth hit splattered him against the side of the container here and then the dragoons uh, moving through electrocuting all in their path nasty stuff here uh, from the skitar you can just imagine uh, this little corridor of death here as we've seen this melee take place but that is the end of the turn so uh, three inch consolidation move there uh, with the dragoons and that marks the end of their turn so how will the eldar respond so we're going to depend on what reserves turn up. It's fascinating to see what arrives and what the Eldar and Tau can do. So their second turn coming up next. All right, so on to the second turn here. Uh, hope is rekindled here as the Eldar reserves begin to arrive. They've all turned up except one unit uh, of the Guardians, the one with the uh, missile platform. So uh, here is the Wraith Guard inside here and the uh, Psyker as well, 
the file series inside there. The fly's turned up. Now we're discussing uh, angles here, fields of fire. These walkers, we reckon, uh, can fire dead ahead, uh, and that means that they, the flyer is outside of their arc, so no interception is going to take place there. So it's a good move uh, from Chris, bringing on uh, the tower flyer. Holding here, uh, pinned down uh, with the cadre fire blade. Uh, walking on here with the uh, guardians, and then uh, the vipers turned up just here as well. Then moving out, slow and purposeful with these, so they will be able to move and then fire, so we could see uh, the infiltrators in trouble. Then the ghost kills here, one of them jumping up on top, and then uh, getting ready to lay down some firepower and then probably retreat as well. Difficult unit to deal with the ghost kills, and two of them together in a unit uh, will be very difficult to dislodge. So I think uh, Chris happy to have those Tau allies helping him out in this game. But that's movement done. Uh, we will go, just looking to see if there is any intercept we can do uh, with the dune crawlers not really Chris has put his skimmers down here and they're out of arc there of the dune crawlers so good maneuvering there also so we'll go on to the sh psychic phase don't think so no because inside the transport so we'll go on to shooting phase next for the Eldar chance for them now I think the sides have evened up we'll see what they can do it's their chance to hit back now with their shooting phase coming up next so shape of the game has changed now with these uh, reserves turning up for the Eldar. Uh, Chris has more units that he can call upon to help him out. He's just weighing up what targets to go after. Uh, but more choices available now and some air cover coming in just at the right time. So Skitari need to stick together, try and brace themselves for potentially a fair amount of damage that could come their way. But Imperial Knight now, you can see him in the centre here uh, of this complex. Uh, it'll be hard to dislodge but uh, Eldar will take the fight to them, and they're being helped out here by some Tau firepower as well. All right, so uh, Chris doing a star engine move here. Uh, this is changing the shape of the game. He's moved up a, a big distance, and now has placed them in a threatening position to go after the dune crawlers here. Remember inside here is the Wraith Guard with their Wraith Cannons, uh, so some nasty weaponry available from them. Interesting stuff. Skitari now, it's not all dead ahead for them, their targets. They've now got a threat coming in on their right-hand flank. They need to be careful here. Looks like Chris is trying to line up attacks from multiple angles. All right, so uh, on to shooting here. Tried to fire a snapshot here with the marker light against the Dragoons, but failed. And then we're on to the Guardians here. Uh, Chris is going after the... Uh, infiltrators, now he's shifted an inch, done a battle focus move, uh, even with fleet, it re-rolled and got a one, so just an inch shifted with them. But now the shot's coming through. Got a nice slot of shots, yeah, freeze to hit now with the Guardians. Um, that's the rest. Good Pretty skills. good. So he's going to he's gonna get a heap of sixes here if he rolls well. Top of the yes. Couple of sixes. And then a load of wounds. Right, trouble here for the infiltrators. All right, so we have two uh, shuriken hits coming through, blade storm hits. Uh, so six plus invul, six plus stealth save, doesn't matter. No, and feel no pain. No, so we'll just remove that model there. He's gone. Then uh, we're on nine saves here, normal armor of four plus. We pass, that's terrible, we pass two, and then feel no pain, really need a bit of help here, I was going to see some infiltrators brought down, good recovery, feel no pain's really helped them out in this game, three wounds, that is a whole model, and then one with a remaining wound, he has gone as well, so halved them in strength, bit of fist pumping here, bit of hatred I think is built up for these uh, electrocution maniacs here <laughs> that have caused trouble uh, for the town Eldar in this game, but uh, Chris has halved the squad in strength so far, and okay. still has Dark Reapers to fire as well, so he's really going after this squad, and uh, he's half killed them. All right, uh, Viper's going to go after them as well, so Eldar uh, ganging up here, Against this squad. Start coming first. Both two hits, two threes, yeah. Sex, two. two sore wounds, two wounds, nicely done. Uh, so five plus cover save and then stealth. So four plus cover here. Should we hold one? This strength six, so no feel, no pain. Instant death. Instant death. We need to do a lookout, sir, here of four plus, otherwise there's trouble. We do. So uh, just one regular infiltrator killed, but that's good. There's another one brought down. Shuriken catapult next. Two sixes, pretty good dice rolling. 
threes to wound, two more wounds coming through. Uh, four plus save. Failed. Feel no pain to help us out again. There's a cock dice. What do we do? Another wound coming through. We'll try and look out. Sir, it four plus. No, it has been taken on the uh, alpha here, or princeps. Yeah, they've been punished here. They're caught out in the open. And uh, they have been punished, infiltrators, which is a shame. They could have caused horrendous trouble here. Uh, but no, that one foul charge. It could, I don't know, I was just going to say tip the game, perhaps in favour. If these are deleted and dealt with, you know, they had the potential to take out two units they fouled, and then in return, if they're destroyed, then that does shift the game uh, towards the Eldar and Tau. But we'll see, it's early stages yet. We'll carry on with the rest of the shooting for the Eldar. All right, so Chris going after, trying to finish these off here uh, with the Dark Reapers. So hit them behind there, and now they've been brought out to to fire just at the right point. So clever here from the Eldar. These are the aspect warriors will do the axe work with a higher BS afterwards. Mm -hmm. so strike five, AP three, hitting all threes. Yeah, this is trouble here. These are the axe arts. These will hit on two plus. Okay. Okay. This is uh, twos to wound here. Strength five, toughness three. It's a couple of ones, but still seven saves to make. Uh, right, so a uh, stealth cover save for these. Then sixes, save two. And then three wounds remaining. Feel no pain to keep these alive. No. More fist pumping here. The infiltrators have been brought down. Sweet revenge here from the Eldar. Was that done with any help from Tau? No, it was pure Eldar, wasn't it? That one? <laughs> so, no, uh, Tau helped. Bit more pride there for the Eldar. Uh, they have brought down the infiltrators here uh, with some well coordinated firepower. Just units overlapping and helping each other out has eliminated that Skatari threat. All right, so uh, Hammerhead now, surprise shot, but it's really the only one that Chris has lined up. He is going to go after the Imperial Knight here. Now, you've got to treat that gun with a bit of respect. We'll see if he hits first. Oh. No, <laughs> he's rolled a one. I always roll ones. It just seems to be a curse here on <laughs> the Hammerhead uh, main gun. I've rolled ones plenty of times in the past, so it has missed the shot's gone wildly. Maybe just trying to coordinate the shot past the ghost kill, uh, <laughs> buzzing past the sights there uh, of the Hammerhead gunship. But he's missed there with uh, the railgun shot. So uh, on to the next round of shooting here. All right, so we saw the infiltrators wiped out, just continued on with the shooting here, uh, firing out from the flyer with the missile pod. And then, uh, what's the name of this gun? Here is a quad iron, quad -iron turret. turret firing down, has brought down three of the vanguard. They've passed morale, they'll hold, but some casualties dealt out on them. Uh, then firing down here. Now, target locks here with the ghost kills, one of them firing through, psychic iron raker coming through here, uh, bringing down two of uh, the rust stalkers. Could have been worse. One of them here was getting cover save which we passed a few of those and then an invun save here was passed as well uh, but two of them brought down uh, no morale check for them they're zealot with the omniscient mask uh, and then down here no damage at all uh, against the dragoons that was firepower from uh, this ghost kill coming down uh, but no damage coming through uh, chris rolling two threes our armor 11 holding and that was about it Saw the hammerhead, he had a shot there against the Imperial Knight, but missing. So, we think we're done. We're going to go on to Assault Phase next. Potential charges now uh, for the Ghost Kills. Yeah, they might charge into the Dragoons here. We'll see. We'll go on to Assaults, see what the Eldar and Tau decide to do. All right, so uh, Chris rolling up here, and what did you roll? Eight, yeah. they're in. All right, so Ghost Kills are going into combat here against uh, the Dragoons. He's playing aggressively. Uh, there's, there's pros and cons either way. Uh, by charging into combat, he can potentially take out another Skitari unit. Danger is he could get locked in combat here, and then other Skitari units and the Imperial Knight uh, potentially can charge him back. So but he's made the decision to be aggressive. Will it pay off? We'll see. We'll go on to combats next. All right, so uh, Hammer of Wrath, first of all. Here, strength six, so one fouls, and that is an 11. That is a hole point there, actually. So one hole point down. There are only two hole points each, these Dragoons. All right, so a uh, hole point taken. We're going to get to strike first here uh, with the Taser Lances. Uh, six attacks from the two Dragoons. Uh, we're weapon skill three. Uh, Chris's weapon skill two. So we'll be on freeze to hit. 
We do get two sixes, so that is a bonus four hits coming through. So we'll just add in some extra dice. That's it. And then we're on twos to wound. They all wound except one. So forcing six saves here from uh, Chris here with the ghost kills. Right, so he's going to take saves on the drones first. I think he's just going to roll a few dice at a time. So these are two drones. One of them dies, one of them holds. Still got four saves to go. Another drone is brought down. So the drones have been stripped away. And then now the remaining saves uh, here on 3 plus armor. She passes all of them just there. So ghost kills still alive. Drones gone here from this unit. Electrocuted. Makes sense. <laughs> They've been electrocuted. Uh, circuits burnt out and then dropped to the ground. But the ghost kills get to fight now on the charge. Right, so attacks here. We're just working out. They are open topped uh, and then AP2 on with attacks here. So we'll be on plus two on any results. Chris trying to get the wipe out here. That's why the drones are expended. Uh, so we'll be on force to hit here with his eight attacks on the charge. Four hits. Half of them do. Now, armor 11, strength 6. Oh, no. They've all failed here. Um, I don't think you're fearless. No, I'm down by 1. I caused the whole point. Yes. Kill two. So, all right, so leadership here of... S uh, leadership 9 drops to 8. Okay, so... <laughs> 11. <laughs> oh dear, we're going to have to try and figure out what's going on here. Um... Right, so uh, uh, can we can we kill these then potentially? Yeah, Monstrous creatures, right? Morale. These have broken morale. We're going to roll initiative. We're on three. Chris is on two. I'm going to roll first and <laughs> get a six. Chris rolled a six as well. It's not enough, right? So ghost kills have been chased down by dragoons. <laughs> the <robot> Bizarre. Bizarre, you mean? Right, so. Um, it's at this point I'll tell you the points cost. They're 45 points a model. <laughs> Brian looks and then goes back to his codex. <laughs> no comment from him. So 90 point unit here is just chased down and electrocuted. Uh, <laughs> ghost kill. So uh, I think Brian's um, reluctant to ever lend out his tower again. <laughs> the Eldar have frittered them away here. Uh, in a combat against uh, these dragoons, but uh, fascinating, and I'll say it again: shocking results. Here. <laughs> uh, so it's fascinating. It's, it is fascinating seeing these different uh, armies collide here, and there's there's three types or four almost really on the table. You've got Skitari, Imperial Knights, Tau, and Eldar battling out. And we're seeing some fascinating combinations uh, take place. Units deleting each other, and some very strange and bizarre uh, results occurring here. But Ghost kills down. That that will surge the Skatari and Imperial Knight ahead here. They're definitely taking the advantage now in this game. That marks the end of combat. So we'll let the walkers uh, consolidate next. All right, so consolidation move done here. Three inches. Uh, the Dragoons now manoeuvring themselves for, for their turn, uh, potentially to go after some other targets as well. So uh, that ends the Eldar Tau turn. We'll go on to the third turn now for the Skitari and their Imperial Knight, which is, as yet is unscratched and sitting, dominating the centre of the table. Main threat for them is across the other side there, uh, the Wraith Guard. But, well, let's just say the Skitari are going to have to think how they're going to deal with that threat, plus other threats still on the table. But the advantage is with them. Uh, the momentum is with the Skitari. Let's see if they can keep it rolling. We'll go on to their third turn next.
Right, so movement for the Scutari here. Uh, they are not really sort of breaking off, taking on different targets here. The old has been given uh, just to pursue targets. Uh, so Dragoons shifting around, nine inches moved by them, just bearing down on the Hammerhead just there, uh, sneaking around the side. Imperial Knights lumbered forward 12 inches, uh, multiple targets to choose to fire at and potentially charge. Uh, then across here, we, we were going to go right ahead there with the Rust Augers, but they're quite vulnerable. Uh, to shooting so we're just tucking them behind uh, the canisters just there and then uh, moving ahead and, and keeping away from the uh, transport there uh, with the dune crawlers then maneuvering there shifting uh, turning around and going backwards there with the rangers with the haywire weaponry and then here turning around uh, here with the uh, Vanguard as well to lend some fire support in this direction. So on to shooting phase next for the Skatari. We've elected to go for plus one ballistic skill this turn. So most units will be firing at ballistic skill five, except Imperial Knight. Uh, we'll go on to their shooting phase next. A chance for them uh, to do some decent damage in return. We'll see. We'll go on to their shooting phase next. All right, so uh, shooting phase here, going to fire... Uh, declaring the firepower with the uh, Imperial Knight. So the rocket pod here is going to go after the uh, Viper. Then uh, the Avenger Gatling Cannon is going to go after the Guardians, and the Stubber is going to fire down here uh, at the Dark Reapers. Okay, so this is this is a, a good situation for Imperial Knight, ability to fire at multiple targets and then potentially charge one of them as well. Um, so we'll start the rocket pod on top after the Viper here. So three shots. Oh dear, he's a, oh, he's a nasty <laughs> Greven Ferris Maximus here is making his presence known on the battlefield. Uh, strength 8, armor 10, <laughs> 6, <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, Jink? No, don't worry about it. Oh. So uh, Chris has removed the model here, but he's going to he's gonna Jink. Toast. No, you saved two. Two yellow points. No, Jink's 4+, plus. So you saved two. So uh, Chris saved two there. We'll just roll our result. <laughs> it's a six. <laughs> anyway, so detonation. Uh, the Viper's gone. In a puff of smoke, he disappears. <laughs> so uh, that's that target deleted. Sort of deleted is sort of the theme here for the target's been destroyed. Um, but uh, we'll continue firing here uh, with... Uh, uh, Greven of Ferris Maximus of House Raven. Right, Avenger Gatling Cannon here. It's like the, the firing range here at the moment. Freeze to hit with this guy. Look at this. One miss. Chris is going to ground. Who wouldn't in that situation? Two's to wound. Uh, we fouled with three, uh, but it is eight saves of six plus here. We bonds. So we'll see if any of them. Yes, two of them. So that is six guardians uh, hosed down there. You can imagine the cannon hosing across the front rank, bring them down. So it is a dry landscape here, but this particular area is wet here with the blood, sweat and tears of these Eldar guardians. <laughs> All that remains here is the heavy stubber just to fire down there. So three shots. What on earth? Triple six. He, he has. Uh, so he has stormed onto the channel here, this Imperial Knight, uh, with those, uh, with this shooting taking place here. Pretty impressive. Uh, two wounds. Chris has passed one of them and uh, one of the Dark Reapers killed. So that's shooting phase done. Uh, for this unit, we'll go on to the rest here for this Skitari. Okay, so shooting here, difficult one. Got to try and take out this transport and then uh, the nasty unit inside with the farce here. Uh, so we have the Vanguard here with their plasma weapons. Would have been a better target to take on the Wraith Guard, but I think we're going to need to try and crack open the transport with them. Uh, there are the Rangers as well, just here with their Haywire weaponry. Can fire. We'll maybe fire them first. So uh, we do have one Arc Rifle uh, within rapid fire range, two shots from him, and then one at the back here is out of range of rapid fire. So three shots, twos to hit. They all hit. Twos to cause any kind of damage. One penetrating hit and two glances coming through. Uh, so the penetrating hit first. Jagger. Yeah, she does. Right, so the transport will survive. And then two glancing shots coming through. Saves another one, so just one hull point dealt out. So we'll have to fire plasma now into the back armor. Now Chris won't get the serpent shield, uh, but he does get his jink as normal. So we'll fire the... 
Uh, the Phosphor Blast Pistol actually is Strength 6, so we'll fire that one. Two's to hit, yes. Strength 6. So, uh, strength 5 there with a pistol. That is a glancing hit against uh, Rear Armor 10. So Chris needs to jink this one, which he does. He would have dropped cover save there by minus one if he'd fouled there and picked up uh, another hole point. But now the Plasma Calibers are all one at a time here because of uh, the Gets Hot special rule. Doesn't get hot on triple two, it is triple hit. We'll roll the other one. Two gets hot. This is the problem with this weapon here. Uh, four plus armor save. We've fouled both. Feel no pain six plus. No. All right, so he has gone. One of those. Expensive model to lose, but he has vaporized himself. So now the hit's coming through. Three from one, and then uh, the one that died, he did get one hit. Go through. Strength seven. Eight, nine, ten, ten. One pen and one glance here. Four up saves. So the, the penetrating hit here. Uh, he saves on a five. Well done. And then fouls on a three with the glancing hit. Right, so two hull points dealt out in total. We're fouled to bring the transport down. It's difficult now to, uh, what to do with the Skitari. Uh, do we try and take out that transport just there? Or do we go after the flyer? I have to think about this one. Right, it's difficult here uh, for the Skitari. This transport remains, and just checking the angle, these two can't even see it, so we've got to go after the fly here uh, with the Icarus arrays here on the dune crawlers. But potential trouble here, there's a nasty unit inside. Uh, this transport is free to move off, uh, and Chris can use those on his next turn. But anyway, we'll go to the shooting here now, try and bring down this fly. All right, so Chris electing not to jink here. Uh, he does have the... Uh, decoy launchers here, we're giving 4 plus in one against the auto cannons. there with, they have interceptor rope, so he gets that and then uh, the other Gatling rocket launchers are ignores cover so Jink wouldn't help, it's really only the Daedalus missile launchers, which is only 3 shots uh, he would get Jink 4, so he's electing not to Jink, we'll fire the Gatling rocket launchers first, ok so 2's uh, to hit here with 15 shots which we miss with 2 and then strength 6, armor is 11, it is 11, and not rolling too well, well no it is down, the flyer's down isn't it, yeah it's gone, hose down there, uh, they dominate the skies here uh, with the honor guard dream crawlers. Alright so that's that reduced down there, to, uh, Chris saying pretty effective anti-aircraft potential there, and that's them just doing their job anchoring at the back and then providing uh, that cover and fire support. So uh, crash and burn here is just landing down here, it's no damage done uh, to any units underneath, um, Brian's had to remove the model, it is stuck to the base, so just a little bit left of the model there on the table. Uh, but just doing their job here, that's their task, is to anchor at the back here and patrol the skies, and that's what the Honor Guard Tune Crawlers have done. So we reckon shooting phase done, or maybe some run moves perhaps with uh, these. We'll think about what to do with the Rust Stalkers. We'll let Chris roll up morale for the Guardians at the back, see if they have the courage to stay. Seven, they do, so they will hold uh, in defiance of the Imperial Knight. All right, so uh, run moves, yes, we ran a roll of three, and then plus three is six, so the Rush Stalkers shifting direction now going to head off this way to the main fret now on the table, uh, the uh, Wraith Guard inside the transport here. So assaults, yes, potentially. Uh, the Vanguard uh, can potentially charge the Wave Serpent, and then across all the way across the other side in the corner, uh, the Dragoons potentially can charge uh, the Hammerhead gunships or roll up some charges next. Right, so uh, double six rolled here for a charge. The Vanguard with their Arc Maul uh, will make it into combat here uh, against the Wave Serpent. Now that should destroy that vehicle and cut down the mobility uh, of that combination. So that's them in. And then across here, uh, the Dragoons easily made it into combat against the Hammerhead. Yeah, then almost forgot here, uh, the Imperial Knight has made it into combat against uh, the Dark Reapers. So three combats here to resolve. We'll go on to those next. All right, so this is kind of the job they're cut out to do. Uh, so Vanguard here charging in. Freeze to hit here uh, with the Alpha. Three hits. And then twos to cause glancing hits here with Haywire. Yeah, a triple glance. He has brought the transport down there with the Arc Maul. Okay, so uh, results there. 
uh, wrecked. We we're just discussing how this works with emergency disembarkation, but we were saying this is a wrecked vehicle now, so it doesn't really count as having to disembark from it as such. Uh, it counts as a wreck, them cl clambering out. Pinning test, but it's fearless unit, so uh, there's no test for them, and they disembark just out the front here. But uh, Wave Serpent destroyed there by the uh, crazy distance charge there by the Vanguard with a double six, where they've moved in and uh, the Arc Mall has finished off the Wave Serpent. So that's that combat resolved. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, where Chris goes and what he decides to do with this unit. There's a Psyker in there as well to use as well. We'll go on to the next combat. So uh, the Imperial Knight here, Hammer of Wrath first of all, does wound, three plus save. Here, all cock dice, number one coming in, passes, the armor holds somehow. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Imperial Knight Warden here, four attacks on the charge. He will need fours to hit to get two, and then uh, twos to kill. A lucky escape, and then a kill. Alright, so one brought down. We've just removed two more. Uh, one stomp we rolled up, and uh, we got a uh, three wounds coming through as a result of a two. Uh, three wounds coming through, uh, and then uh, Chris passing two. Exarch's still alive, so he remains there, defiant at the foot of this uh, colossal machine. Uh, but there'll be a morale test for them now to see if they hold, or he holds. It's just one lone Exarch. Chris rolling up, scores a nine. They're going to run. So initiative six here. Chris rolls a six, he's away, and then two d6 here. If he rolls high enough, he'll be off the table. He's only sounds to be off the table. <laughs> here we go. Seven. No, he'll stay on. He'll fall back here at seven inches. Right, so Exarch falls back here. You can imagine him shouting across to the Guardians if you value your lives. Run. <laughs> and then calls out to the uh, Fireblade here to cover their retreat. As to whether he'll do that, we'll have to see. We'll consolidate here with the Imperial Knight. Uh, it's a dire situation here, at least in this zone of the table. But at least five Guardians stand defiant here against the might of this Imperial Knight. But we'll go on to the next combat. We'll consolidate him and then go on to this combat here. The Dragoons out for bounty again, potentially can take out a Hammerhead gunship. All right, so this combat here, right in the corner of the table. So uh, Hammer of Wrath's not going to damage side armor 12. You have to strike the armor facing uh, that they've reached. So we'll bypass that and go straight on to attacks. Eight attacks here should do damage. Threes to... Oh. Threes to hit. And then if you could just pass an extra eight dice for hits coming through from these uh, taser lances here. Would you believe it? <laughs> uh, twos or more to cause trouble. Oh dear. I mean, if that was a squadron. Hang on a second. Let's just figure this out. So yeah, just line them up here. That hammerhead's been killed four times over. So imagine if that was a squadron. Just from a unit. Two uh, man unit of dragoons here has caused horrendous damage. Yet again, uh, a 90 point unit now has ratched up. Who knows, hundreds of points worth of damage, but uh, unit of the game potentially here for sure. But uh, Hammerhead has been brought down. Uh, that vehicle's now been destroyed. All right, so Hammerhead down. Uh, <laughs> sounds like the title of a film. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's that uh, close combat finished. Very uh, impressed. Some aspects of this Guitari army are very impressive here. But we'll go now on to the next turn for the Eldar. Yeah, so uh, the third turn coming up now for the Eldar. Uh, situation looks kind of desperate down here. Now Eldar pushed right away. The, the Imperial Knights just bulldozed his way through, uh, along with other Skitari units, uh, pushing the Eldar and Tau off the objective. Uh, and then over here, Tau, uh, the uh, Skitari turning to face and dealing half dealing with the trouble, uh, potential trouble down here from the Wraith Guard. But Farseer here, uh, is he the Warlord for the army? Uh, Spirits here, yes. Yes, so he's the warlord. He's led uh, his unit up uh, into the heart of Skatari territory here, and his Wraith Guard on standby, ready to fire. We'll see what they do. It's the third turn coming up next for the Eldar and Tau Alliance. All right, so uh, onto the <laughs> onto the uh, third turn here for the Eldar. Rolled a one for reserves there for the other Guardian unit. They've decided not to come on. Don't know why. I don't know what would put them off from coming onto the table, but they've not turned up this turn. Uh, I'm just looking around for the the allies here. Pretty much just the fire blade left. Um, so uh, Brian beginning to pack 
the other models away here. <laughs> Just the fire blade uh, remains here as to what he'll do. Uh, maybe this allied, this alliance will begin to fracture at this point. We'll have to see. Uh, and then Guardians hit. They did pass morale. There's, there's him to rally uh, on a heroic morale roll of a double one. Run for your lives. I don't think he's going to rally. Oh, he almost did a two and a one. But not quite enough, so he runs <laughs> <laughs> 11 inches. <laughs> so he is gone. Uh, so uh, we'll go on to the rest of the movement here for the Elder. All right, so movement phase uh, was 24 and a half seconds. Uh, so he's moved out to here, 6 inches with their Wraith cannons. Be interested to see what kind of damage they can do. Uh, Guardian shifting across 6, and then uh, for Honor here, the Fireblade moving on his own. Uh, towards the Skatari army. That's it. So we're going to Psychic Phase next for the Elder. All right, so Psychic Phase done and pretty good actually. So Conceal and Protect both played. Uh, we didn't block either of those. So Shrouded and Armor Save increased to 2 plus here. So uh, Chris using some powers to protect that unit. So I can see why the uh, Farseer was taking their excellent enhancements from him. We'll go on to the Shooting Phase next for the Elder on their third turn. All right, so uh, shooting phase done here. Uh, so only two of these models could see the June crawlers just with this big thing in the way. Uh, so Chris rolled two twos and missed, so no damage from them coming through. Uh, then across here, the uh, Guardians doing a run move, just trying to get to the boxes of barrels. Fireblade firing through did cause one wound there on the Rust Stalkers, and that is it. So shooting phase finished. Assaults, none. So that marks the end of the third turn. Chance now for the Skitari uh, to continue on with their advantage here. It does look like uh, that victory is heading towards them, but we'll press on here to their fourth turn coming up next. All right, so movement for the Skitari here. Uh, Vanguard moving out across, getting ready to fire through the fence. Uh, the Rangers here moving across, getting ready to fire. And the June Crawlers with their close combat potential, their strength 10 AP1, uh, may well be able to charge in as well. Uh, then across here, uh, the Rust Stalkers moving up nine inches, nice and quick from them. Remember, the objective is just in between the crates there. And then the Imperial Knight swinging around, getting ready to fire uh, down at the Guardians and uh, potentially... Uh, the fire blade as well. Then nine inches spinning around uh, with the dragoons. Uh, again, getting ready to move around onto the objective. So that is the movement phase done for the Skatari. We'll go on to their shooting phase next. So uh, just for Doctrine and Imperatives, we're on plus one weapon skill this turn so that we don't lose anything for our ballistic skill, uh, but just our weapon skill goes up by one. All right, so shooting phase done. Uh, the Imperial Knight... Uh, finished off the Guardians just there, and then a uh, rocket round went through uh, the back of the <laughs> fireplace chest there and destroyed him. So Tau uh, Empire allies have now been neutralised here. The report goes back across the Skatari radio. Target deleted. <laughs> uh, and then uh, this area now has been cleansed. There's, there's no uh, Xenos left here. And then down here, shooting home through uh, from the Vanguard Rangers, and then also uh, two of the uh, June Crawlers could fire as well. Uh, three of the Wraith Guard brought down, two of them left, and the Farseer. No morale for them, they are fearless. Uh, but this is it, this is all that's left on the table. The Farseer stands defiant. We'll go on to Assaults here. Uh, potentially the June Crawlers can charge in. Maybe these other units as well, we'll see. We'll go on to Assaults next. All right, so uh, charge is taking place. We charge with the Vanguard first. No damage against them in Overwatch. And contact made. Uh, rolling at eight. Less two for going through cover. They're in. And the June Crawlers have made it into combat as well. Trying to charge with this unit of Rangers, but they failed uh, to make any rolling a four, needing a five. So we'll resolve uh, this combat here, potentially the last combat of the game. Okay, so combat's here. Uh, the Alpha has challenged uh, the Spirits here, and he's accepted. Chris gets to go first. Uh, we're on Bliss Weapon Skill 4, so you'll be on 4s. Uh, right, Are you right? Okay, Weapon Skill 5. So, two hits. Two hits. Okay, yeah, so he's got a pistol here and uh, his combat weapon as well, so that's two attacks, two hits coming through. It could be in trouble here, actually. Flashbang, and it's the Soul Blaze, which will go onto the young. Oh, so potential trouble here. 
Two wounds. Two wounds. No AP. Right, so no AP here. Our uh, battle armor will need to hold here on a four plus. We save one, but one wound does come through. He is a two wound model, so he's still alive. Uh, feel no pain, actually. Six plus. Nope. Okay, so the wound does come through. So, uh, Skitari on fire here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in this game they, they have done pretty well but uh, physically literally on fire uh, here now with soul blaze or all up at the end uh so initiative what initiative are these four. initiative four let them fight next well, let's go for it. going against the regular yeah, vanguard yeah so two hits here on a four and a six two wounds strength five one wound okay one wound coming through uh, four plus save. It holds. The armor holds on the uh, vanguard there. Uh, the challenge here, the alpha fighting, gets four attacks on the charge. Uh, fours to hit with him. He is on fire. And then strength five. Twos. Twos, yeah. Two wounds coming through. Just going to check. Uh, what's your armor save? Rune armor is four, but I have the protect power on, so it's now a three up and vulnerable. Nice, okay, so three plus in one save coming through. Two wounds. Found with one. Now, your. So, just a. So, how many wounds does he have? Two. He has two wounds. Your toughness drops to two. Radiation. Radiation. And we're strength five. Well, that he's been brain. instant death, yeah. yeah. So, another shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Electrocutions taking place here. Bizarre stuff uh, here from the Skitari. So, uh, radiation poisoning here. The Eldar are not used to this kind of uh, exposure here. Uh, but the, in the challenge, uh, the Farseer has been killed. So, that's that. We'll see about these two. Uh, Rafe Guard next. So, five remaining Vanguard here. Needing fours. And then... Uh, strength three, toughness five now with the uh, radian radium poisoning. So fives is good. So uh, two saves here of two plus at the moment for the two plus. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Yes, his armor saves increased by one, a one and almost two ones. <laughs> so one of these things brought down here. One remains. Uh, June crawlers left to fight. Right, so just pile in here with this walker. Uh, one attack each and charging four attacks. This is it. The last rolls of the, the game here. Uh, fours to hit. What a roll here. Four hits. Twos to kill. Two fouls, but two kills there. Knowing one save, the last of the Wraith Guard is destroyed. And it is actually a wipeout. All right, so uh, wipeout there, technically a wipeout. Still, that unit of guardians uh, never turned up in the end. Uh, <laughs> they won't. They'll, they'll live to fight another day, along with the uh, surviving Dark Reaper Exarch, who survived and then ran off the table. But that is uh, a victory here for the Skitari. So objective held here for them, three points. And then uh, the Dragoons, there holding their objective just in between the crates. So six points there. Uh, Linebreaker scored by the Wraith. Uh, by the Imperial Knight, uh, then Slay the Warlord as well, and First Blood is 9 points to 0, so a very clear victory here for the Skitari and their Imperial Knight ally. Uh, it's been a very, very interesting game indeed, just seeing different uh, armies taking each other on, first time clash that we've seen, debut for the Skitari at their full 1850 points, and then there's some new units that Chris has tried out here as well. Definitely a learning curve for both sides, and uh, Chris no doubt swears revenge here against the Skitari, but they have made their mark. Don't bring it tight they... in Eldar's job. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, I think, wants to have pure Eldar, his own army painted up. He does have a Wraith Knight uh, on the way, plus other units as well. So he's working on his force, gradually building that up to full strength, and maybe we'll get to see them take on the Skitari in a game in the future. What a game that will be, potentially, but we'll see. Uh, but for now, Skitari have uh, pushed forwards. They've destroyed literally all in their path and they've secured victory here in this game so they've stormed onto the channel they've made their mark with a clear victory as to how well they're doing future games we'll have to see but they definitely are an army to be watched in the future great game thanks to chris and brian for coming down and a very interesting clash indeed uh, we have seen but thanks for watching and tune in next time
All right, so uh, just discussing units of the game, pretty pretty clear for the Skitari. Uh, we're going to give it to the Dragoons. Uh, we reckon the 90-point unit destroyed about 530 points worth uh, of targets there. Uh, some uh, amazing results from that unit, so we're going to give it to them. A number of other Skitari units did perform well. The Vanguard particularly good from them, uh, with their taking out the Rangers and then coming across and supporting uh, the shooting and combat over here. Uh, remember, they did uh, do damage there as well against the... Uh, what are they destroyed? Yeah, in combat, the... Uh, wave Serpent, so pretty good from them. Uh, June Crawlers, tough target. Uh, they sit there, lay down some firepower, uh, controlled the skies, eliminated the flyer pretty quickly, and then uh, contributed in close combat as well. And then across here, Rust Stalkers a bit out of the game. Uh, infiltrators, a good start from them, but they fouled a charge and then were caught out and destroyed. And the Imperial Knight uh, expected him to do well, and uh, he did. He delivered uh, well in this game also. So... Definitely potential here for this army. For Eldar. The humble guardian. Chris is going to give it to the guardians. They let down some pretty decent firepower um, with their blade storm results coming through, helping to destroy the infiltrators. And then the other unit was wise enough to stay off the table and live to fight another day. But that's units of the game for both sides.